and yet somehow our personality differences are offset by the fact that that same mad scientist blood flows through both our veins. We live for the unexpected, the experimental, and the subtly disruptive. She has her hands through my hair, hands like they had a life somewhere else, making rare and precious things, and she tells me, I've never been to the Redwoods. Y'all, three weeks ago, I'm a reader in an audition, and this girl walks in and bugs Bunny Roger Rabbit. My tongue is on the floor, my heart pops out my chest, and my eyes have exploded. She looks directly at me and says, hey, do I know you? Now I want to keep it cool with everything inside me, saying, yo, Chris, man, keep it cool. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> but it comes out something more like, <laughs> me, no, no. <laughs> Cool. I was gonna make it up because I was gonna be the best reader she ever had, and I was. I killed it. We killed it. I might have stolen her name from casting, I might have Facebook stalked her, I might have sent her a message, to which she responded, so I sent her another one asking her on a date, to which she never responded. That was that. It was Tuesday. I just sold all my possessions for a dollar. I'm moving back to New York on Wednesday. I get a call from the theater. They say, hey, Chris, remember that play you were a reader for? Yeah, well, this guy, he booked the TV thing. You want to come do it? I thought, yeah, sure. Guess who also was in the play, thanks to one badass reader. <laughs> she got me in every way imaginable, and her name for all sacred purposes is where all good and great things go from, and she loved trees. Trees in abundance. You've never been to the Redwoods? You've never been to Big Sur? I can do this. I can take her. We can do this. I don't care that I have real world and schedule things tomorrow. I can do it. Don't just talk the talk, Chris. You better walk that motherfucker. You better drive six hours for this girl. I can make this beautiful being in my arms smile and seeing her smile feel so damn good. So I canceled all my appointments, everything I had planned and told myself was important, and I actually used the line, hey, I gotta go see about a girl. Because as Mark Twain so aptly put it, there ain't no sure way to find out whether you love someone or hate them than to travel with them. So I packed up my tent sleeping bag, I woke her up at 515, and off we went. It was an in-your-face invitation to the unknown. All right, notable detail, we have a bag of mushrooms. Not shit hockey, it's not portobello, but it's the burning mankind. <laughs> The magical kind. The drive is great. I figure this is the test, right? Six hours in the car with someone I barely know. I mean, not really, yeah, we're like spiritually bound and shit, but whatever. <laughs> do I know her? Like, do I really know her? The little things I know as of a couple of days ago, she had a boyfriend, and before me, it was him. He was the one, so maybe she finds ones. We pull off at this highway one, cutest can be rest stop. We find our spirit animal, a butterfly. We haven't even done the drugs yet. <laughs> We finally make it. Big Sir Julia Pfeiffer, star of the world. It feels that way, like everything you know and love crawled out of the waters there. Camp is set. We look each other in the eyes and we proceed to consume our magic goodies. The fast forward version of Eight Magical Hours includes tears, silly perma smiles, the world in slow motion. Everything is the most beautiful thing. I'm water, she's a tree. We're perfect for each other. We're in it and we talk this we pay it. We get us, we get love, we get life. I say, I'll always love you. She goes, Oh, my little poet, you're so romantic because then we're in it and then cautious and then in it and then cautious and we're announcing our love to the earth and shouting into the trees and the kicker me imagining a future where I slip my hand behind a soft thickening middle-aged waistline and knowing that I couldn't love her anymore it's getting dark now we just took another mushroom because why not what if this is all drug induced but if none of this is really real, why not hang on to the feeling just a little bit longer, right? As we get closer to base camp, she says, Hey, wouldn't it be funny if someone stole our stuff? <laughs> what? <laughs> nah, nah, that, would, that wouldn't be funny. <laughs> and I don't know what it was, but I was thinking like, yeah, maybe. And so I walk a little faster and then a little faster and then a little faster until I turn the corner. And all our stuff is gone. All of it. Everything, everything gone. Wallet, phone, tents, money gone like we were never there. Everything is gone except the keys in my pocket and dust. That's all we have left. That and each other. You know, we're not really panicking, a lot of giggling, a lot of laughing, because we're really high and we just discovered the meaning of life, so we can't get too upset, right? <laughs> This is appropriate, you know, eight hours of magic, the world cracking open and realizing your gifts to the universe. Oh, sometimes you say adventure and really you're just making plans and that's when life says, oh shit, okay, cool, you want an adventure? All right, how about I take all your shit? Now you got an adventure. <laughs> Romantic getaway and whatnot, that was just plans, baby. I want you to know, you're gonna meet my version of life. She's like an old lady who sits on a stoop in Washington Heights. She's got mad universal wisdom. We go up to some other campers. 
We tell them, hey, you see them take our stuff? There's a lot of stuff. They're probably going to do it on one trip. Maybe they could. No, you saw nothing? Okay, cool. Uh, they politely inform us, even though we look like maniacs, that there's a ranger station 11 miles up. Maybe they can help you. 11 miles, that would be cool. Maybe they can. Uh, let me tell you something. 11 miles on the PCH at night when it's dark, windy ass roads and shit on mushrooms is a fucking marathon. <laughs> You gotta drive super slow so you don't die. Two, so much crying and laughing. Everything's so damn beautiful. Oh my god. I think we pulled over about 14 times just to look at the moon through a moon roof. I gotta drive on a couple hundred more yards just to do it again. A moon through a moon roof for, for real though, if you ever have a chance. Try it. You see, what we have lost in possessions, we have gained in an unbeatable conversation starter. Yo, this is how we rose in love. Oh, that's cute. Y'all want to find your way. Cute, cute, cute. Y'all trying to say you love each other. Your water sees a tree. That's cute. Good luck getting your shit back, bitch. <laughs> we find our way to this big sir inn. We see this cute hostess. I tell her, hey, uh, this is what happened. She rolls her eyes and she gives up on humanity. So sure, you can try and find the ranger station, but I doubt they have your stuff. But nope, not us. We're not giving up on humanity because we're still really high and still really in love. So we push on a little further. We find another inn. We meet a wonderful hostess named Hannah. Who that was great, you said Hannah? Yeah. Yeah. Named Hannah, who uh, tells us we are exactly where we need to be. She points us in the right direction. Here comes the ranger. Cute as a button, baby face, ready to lecture us. Do you know that you did not have a reservation? I plead with him, sir. Who's got time for a reservation when you just want to show this girl some trees? <laughs> He disappears for a couple of minutes. He comes back with all our stuff. Everything. He gives us a citation and he says, please don't allow this experience to leave a bad taste in your mouth regarding the park. <laughs> please come back. Oh, we will, sir, we will. Y'all, we got it all back, everything. Everything back through impossible odds. I am not setting up a tent. I am not sleeping in my car. I'm going back to that inn with that hostess who rolled her eyes at us, and we're going to get ourselves a bed, and we're going to sleep so well. Oh, you don't have rooms. You sell out months in advance? Of course you do. That's cool. We'll go someplace else. It's not a big deal. Yeah, think again, sucker. It's a wine festival in town, and it's a three-day weekend. There isn't a room for miles. And when life said miles, she meant miles. I have driven 22 more miles than I have ever been in my life. I am exhausted. She has passed out. I cannot drive anymore. Anymore. I'm asking the world, what is this? What do you want me to know? I see this motel in the corner of my eye, and I reverse in the middle of a busy street because I know that I am not dying today. We run in, we tell him our story. He predictably says, all the rooms are sold out. Sir, you don't understand. I can't go anymore. We got a room. There's no shower, but there's a bed. Yes. Yes, please. And we sleep. Sleep well learned. We rise, we laugh, we make love, we laugh. It's a new day. Are we still filled with this euphoric love? Is it all still magic? Is it all still real? Was it all just drug induced? On the way home, she says, you know, we should uh, try and watch the sunset. Deal? Deal. So I'm trying to time it. When is it? Where's the perfect place to pull over? I see this turnout that seems to go down to the ocean, and I take it. I park. And the most magical sunset ever is upon us. We now know we are exactly where we need to be. I'm at a place I never would have been unless all the rooms were sold out, unless all our stuff was taken. If I needed a weekend to get to know her, y'all, I got it, I now know. Back in the car, night has come, it is dark, and she says, you know, if we get married, we should do it here, where we fell in love. If, if we get married, don't make me laugh, if. <laughs> but I now know what I learned is that other people keep our souls alive just like food and water does with our body. There is something beautiful about a billion stars being held steady in a sky by a God who knows what he is doing. And I have never made a single mistake ever. I'm speaking for myself here, but I encourage you to hop on this train. Never a single mistake. The absurdity of us being on this planet. 
conscious beings, one of seven billion in the here and now, and then in my own life, I have done so much worry and angst and what ifs and questions and hows and why nots, and yet here I am with her. It couldn't be any other way. Had I booked this job or that job, had I done this, had I had more money, had I been more successful, it wouldn't be her, and it wouldn't be right now. No looking, just trusting that life, life puts us together. It moves mountains, it takes your stuff, it scares the shit out of you. It shows you things about who you are that you would have never intended to reveal, but oh, are we grateful. You know, I used to say it was crazy. I'd be like, yo, fellas, I met this girl, it's crazy. Yo, you won't believe what happened, it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. But no, 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 nothing crazy about it. Magnificent, yes, crazy, no. Our small world wants to refer to everything incredible, only read about in books and seen in movies, it's crazy. There is nothing crazy about it, it is real as real as anything and everything, and when we can, we must tackle the motherfucking shit out of life. We must grab it, tackle it, sink our teeth into it. It won't always be like this. There will be Fridays and thus quiet romantics will take out the garbage without fanfare. The calendar on the fridge with the unimaginative squares of two lives being made one. The toilet seat will be left predictably up and the sink will have a load of last night's dishes and there is the now and the beautiful boring and the way two lives go into time with each other. You mean, most of the time you say adventure and really you're just making plans. Life says, oh, you want an adventure? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, how about I take your shit? <laughs> All of it. And don't worry. I'll leave you your keys and enough gas to figure it out. Now you've got an adventure. This is an adventure. This is life.